question over here. Uh, can we can we somehow deduce from the delta d one minus d two over c? Can we give a statement something similar to if if we have high frequency, like higher delta f, then the uh, it's going to be flat fitting instead of selective fitting. Actually, it's the opposite. So um, frequency selective happens if this is large. So if, in other words, if the bandwidth is large with respect to this, and this actually has a special term, this is called the delay spread. So um, but, uh, that's the next point I was going to make. Uh, D1 minus D2 over C is called the delay spread. And generally, the, the, the time difference of arrival between the first um, the first path and the last path is called the delay spread. So if the delay spread is, uh, really what you want to look at is the delay spread times the times the bandwidth. So if the bandwidth is huge, then in order to have flat fading, you need a tiny delay spread, and vice versa. If the, uh, the delay spread is really big, in order to have a flat fading, you need a very small bandwidth. Sorry, uh, if, just before we go to the topic, isn't it uh, the the way I'm looking at it? It's actually uh, confusing me a little in a way because cost actually, as he mentioned too, that uh, cost actually irritates. Essentially, it's going to come to the same point. Yeah. So, isn't there like a delta f? Is a range of delta f that that we are looking for, and then after that, it's going to repeat the same pattern. So that's correct. Um, I mean, if so, generally. Um, the take-home message from here is that small delay spread is good. So um, if you carefully designed your system, you might be able to argue that small delay spread plus 2 pi times, or some, like some, some like skipping along effect would, would also be OK. Um, that's not, uh, while it's true, it's not very useful. Uh, really, uh, what, you, what you really want to learn from this is that small delay spread is good. Yeah. Let's say you set up like the network of the city like Manhattan, right? Most of the structures, you know where they're going to be. Surely you can compensate for that just by, as long as your dependence on stationary, you shouldn't really have a problem compensating for the effective So that's absolutely true as long as all your antennas are stationary. Yeah. Um, it's not true in a cell phone network because you are moving around. Right. Um, so there is a quantity, um, there's a quantity called. Um, but even then, in a cell phone network, like you can. So, um, really, what this boils down to is how much effort you want to put into mapping out the signal strength of your entire network and communicating that information to the terminal. So, uh, cell phone companies, uh, or in, in any practical setting, it's, it, it's actually not easy to do that. So, basically, what they do is they just build in margin to, uh, to uh, overwhelm the problem. Um, there is a quantity called Actually, I think it's uh, there's there's a coherence distance. I can't actually remember if that's what it's called or not. But there's there's a certain distance or spatial coherence, something like that, over which um, uh, signals will be expected to have the, roughly the same amplitude. So as you're walking along, uh, let's say the coherence distance is five meters. Then if your uh, if your handset is a bad signal over here, walk five meters in any direction, and chances are it will improve. So, um, if all of the if all of the antennas in your system were fixed, and what you want to do is you want to guarantee a good signal, you, basically what you do is you plant down your antenna, measure the signal. If it if it uh, if it wasn't working for you, move it by the coherence distance, and then try it again. So, yeah, you could do that. It's just that um, the whole point of of, um, of wireless communications in this context is that it's mobile, so you can't necessarily predict exactly what the signal is going to be in any point. And in fact, we're going to talk about this in a second. It doesn't even matter that all of the antennas are stationary uh, because they, they can be bouncing off moving things, like a bus. Yeah. 